friends, it's Sarah and it is time for my September favorites. I am so excited as always to share them with you. I haven't filmed outside now and gosh, I think it's been quite a while. I looked back in my videos and I think the last time I filmed Perfect. favorites video outside was in April, which sounds about right because I live in Texas and it's disgustingly hot. It is now the end of September and it is just now starting to cool off. <laughs> so I have some Young Living favorites for you guys some beauty favorites and an awesome book. So let's go ahead and dig in. I wanted to go ahead and start with my Young Living favorites. My first favorite is the Roll On Breathe Again. I absolutely love this essential oil blend. I was going to say RC, and then I thought about the oils that I constantly reached for on a regular basis this month. And while I love RC, and I always carry it with me, and I use it a lot, I kept Breathe Again in my purse because it's a roll-on. You can see there, there's a nice little metal top on there. And this one was a promo a couple of months ago. I've had this one for quite a while, and I'm down to about there in the bottle. I love this one. It smells so good. I would apply some, but the last time I did that in a video, I realized that I had this like awful wet looking look under my nose the whole rest of the video, and I thought, you know what? I know people know it's oil, but I'm just going to leave it. So you understand. I see masseuse who knows a lot about reflexology as well as acupressure points. And she has suggested to me multiple times because I take my essential oils with me to my massage. And then when she's working on me, she will use them and it's awesome. And she said that you have two points right in this general area that are um, pressure points for your sinuses or your sinus system. And so I have been applying this oil right in there kind of next to the bone, as well as under my nose. And then sometimes, also per her suggestion, I apply it on my temples because it helps me just feel better, especially living in Texas. You know the crazy seasonal things that happen here. Those are the places that I've applied it that it's really helped. And it's very similar in nature to me, to the RC or respiratory care. There are slightly different oils in there. Let me read off to you what's in this Breathe Again blend. This has a couple different types of eucalyptus in it. I can't pronounce Pronounce the first one it's eucalyptus stagiana I don't know if I'm saying it right I'll put the name there on the bottom so you can see it as well as eucalyptus globulus laurel rosehip peppermint eucalyptus radiata copaiba balsam fir blue cypress and myrtle there's so many good oils in there and I love this one just an oldie but a goodie and this is one that I just reached for probably almost every other day or every couple of days and then my other favorite essential oil is new to me and it is a blend I picked this one up in a essential rewards unboxing I really enjoyed using the sensation oil this month this smells very light, very floral, very sweet to me. So if you don't like sweet floral scents, this may not be your favorite, but there's so many good essential oils in here. You've got coriander, ylang ylang, bergamot, jasmine, and geranium. I bought this one because I heard that you could really smell the jasmine in it, and that's one of my favorite oils, and I just don't have the budget to get it right now. And I've diffused it sometimes, but I've mostly used this one as my personal perfume. And I just realized this a couple days ago. I kind of have a little essential oil hack if you will. If you really enjoy the smell of the blend Highest Potential, um, it has been out of stock for quite a while and I don't know when it's coming back into stock. And just the other day, I smelled Highest Potential because I do have that one. It's quite an old bottle and I'm treasuring it and using it very sparingly. And then I smelled Sensation and they actually smell very similar. Now these are not the same oils, they don't have the same constituents to them. And I think you can smell the Jasmine even more in the Highest Potential blend. But if you want an oil blend that smells similar to Highest Potential in fragrance, check out the Sensation blend because it is in stock. I think this is around $30 and that was my favorite blend this month. And I would say an honorary essential oil blend favorite is something that I just started using probably the last couple of weeks. This is Magnify Your Purpose 
which is a great essential oil blend and there are tons of oils in this one. I'll put them down at the bottom of the screen there. I did not like the smell of this one when I first got it. I could smell the sage and I could smell the nutmeg and I like nutmeg all right, but I really have had to learn to grow to enjoy sage because I didn't like it at first, but it has really, really grown on me and I've been applying this one before I go to my rehearsals or before I just set about doing my tasks during the day. I almost found myself craving it, which is crazy because I usually don't crave scents like this. It's just not in the scent profile of my normal wheelhouse of essential oils, if you will. So this one has been surprisingly delightful as a favorite. I know this is one that I'm I'm going to continue using especially as I go through the rehearsal process of the musical that I'm doing right now. And now I have a book favorite. I love to share my favorite books with you guys on my channel but I feel like I haven't done that in a while. I'm a voracious reader. I'm hoping to write a book here in the next year or two or at least start to write it. I'm always reading at least four or five books. So that being said I probably should have been sharing books with you more often than I do. I just finished this book today actually. I sat out on this very porch this morning, finished this book, it's absolutely incredible. I would say this is probably my favorite fiction read of the year thus far. And I've read a good amount. Um, and I'm very stingy with my five-star reviews. <laughs> All that to say, enough with the build-up. This is called The Storied Life of A.J. Fickery by Gabrielle Zevin. This is my library copy there. This book is so good. And you know, I wasn't sure whether I was going to enjoy it. But I heard a lot about it on the What Should I Read Next podcast, which is my absolute favorite favorite podcast. Ann Bogle, who is a blogger that I have been following for years, started it this year and it is hugely successful now and I never miss an episode. And in it she talks to different people and um, finds out what they enjoy reading and then suggests books to them. Well, one of my favorite guests that she's ever had on her show was Tish Oxenreiter, who is an author and a writer and entrepreneur who I follow a lot, really enjoy her. She has a blog called The Art of Simple and I'll put links down below to this particular podcast at Tish's site. Just so you can check these links out because I think you'll enjoy them. This is about a man named AJ Fickery and he lives on this little tiny island and he owns a bookstore and when the book starts out he's very sad kind of curmudgeonly. He's recently widowed and he owns this bookstore and he's just not very happy with his life. He's in his bookstore one day and he goes to a section and he finds that someone has literally left a little baby in a basket with a note in his bookstore and um, it sounds like a crazy premise but it's really not and you learn so much about the different characters in the book it makes sense and um, he becomes a father and just starts really experiencing lots of amazing things in his life and it's just really his story and the people in his life it's so so good the reason I loved it is yes I love those characters and I liked that but what I really love is this is a book for people who love books who love bookstores who are just real book nerds because it talks a lot about the ins and outs of bookstores there's a character in the book who is a book rep for a publishing company. Um, there's so many references to books. It's kind of like a love letter to people who love reading and love books. So if you enjoy a really heartwarming fiction story that takes some really interesting and unexpected twists, pick this one up. You can find it at your library like I did or I'll put the Amazon link down below to the paperback. Had I known I was going to love the book this much, I totally would have bought the paperback for my own personal library. But since I did read it in hardcover, I picked it up the library and so can you. If you saw my first weekly vlog, um, I will put the card up there if you haven't. I talked about some of these car gadgets I got for myself. I needed a little contraption to put on my dashboard so that I could put my iPhone up because I use my iPhone in my car for GPS. GPS capabilities because the GPS in my car is a little bit outdated and we just don't want to pay the money to have to update the computer system. So enter my awesome techie husband who did some research on Amazon and look what he came up with. Look at this little bad boy. So we paid $20 for this. I'll put the link down below to Amazon so you can get it for yourself if you're interested. It's so cool. It is a non-stick tripod if you will and it has a universal clasp in it but the cool thing is is that you don't have to stick it with a suction cup or an adhesive or anything it is weighted almost like a bean bag so it sits really nicely and heavily on your dashboard you don't have to move it you don't have to stick it to anything and then you put your phone in this clasp and it is perfect for my car i can just slap my phone in there i have my gps on i don't have to look down or set my phone somewhere and then it falls when i 
turn or whatever. And my hope was is that those would also hold a camera if I wanted to vlog. But because of this universal clasp, I have only been able to use my iPhone on it. And I did buy another car gadget that's like a tripod for my camera. And I would like to say it's my favorite, but if you watch that vlog, it's good, but it's just, I haven't quite figured out how to use it in my car. So I'm still experimenting and playing with that. If you need a mount for your iPhone or smartphone to do any sort of GPSing or anything, um, this is awesome. I love it. And I'll put the link down below on Amazon so you can check it out. So my last section of favorites are beauty favorites. And I have a good amount of them this month. My first beauty product favorite is um, something I picked up this past month and I used it all the time when I was doing the musical Camelot. I have a couple of eyeshadow palettes that I use every day, but other than that, I really don't usually buy palettes. So the idea of buying a blush palette was bizarre to me. Like I thought, I just can't justify it. Well, then I did a show and realized I was running low on a lot of makeup that I use on stage. And this little guy came into my life. This is the Cheekathon Benefit Palette. This thing is awesome. This comes with four blushes and a bronzer. And I tell you, this is fantastic. For my skin coloring and tone and type, I feel like I'm using all the colors in it. I'm not usually someone who wears blush at all. The reason I even discovered it was this shade here in the corner is called Dallas, and it is my go-to blush color. Sometimes I even use it as a contouring color because I'm not a makeup guru. I very rarely contour and highlight and do all of that unless I'm gonna be on stage. This Dallas blush by itself usually sells for around $22, which is a lot, but it lasts a long time. And then I discovered that this palette was right around $50, and I thought for the cost breakdown, to pay a little more than double and then get all these extra products, it was really worth it. So this Hoola bronzer, I've heard a lot of beauty vloggers talk about and they really love it. And I found it worked really well as my contour on stage and I'm actually starting to wear it every day, every once in a while. And then both the Dandelion and Coralista colors are really lovely on stage. I'm usually not a coral person, but these shades just all look really good on my skin tone. And this Rockateur color, oh my word, it's totally my new favorite shade. I don't know if you can see that shimmer there. It's really light and I'm here out here in the sun. These are really great. I'm sorry I'm not going to swatch them all, but um, just check this palette out. It's at Sephora, Ulta. You can order it online. It's amazing. Today I have on a little bit of the Rocketeer color and I have a little bit of the Hula bronzer on and I just really love it and it's a great value. So check this one out. The next one is a highlighter, which is again another product that I would not use in my everyday everyday life, but I realized that I needed some more for doing stage. And I've been researching these products and watching a lot of beauty vlogger videos because I was intrigued by Jaclyn Hill's Becca Champagne Pop, of course. And I talked about this in one of my other vlogs, but I actually swatched the Champagne Pop color on my cheeks one day at Sephora and it looked really bad on me. I don't know why. I don't know if it's because I have rosacea. Um, it's a beautiful color, but honestly, it made me look a little jaundiced, which was weird. So I went back in and I was looking at the different highlighters and I chatted with one of the makeup artists that works at Sephora that helps me a lot with my show makeup. And they said, you know what? You should really try a different shade. And I got a different shade other than Champagne Pop. It has become my favorite. I wore it all through Camelot. I've got a little bit of it on, as you can see. It actually looks a little brighter here in this outside light than it does in everyday real life. But I put a little on for the video, it was fun. This is the Becca Shimmering Skin Highlighter in Pearl, and it looks really, really light, and it is. Look at that bad boy, guys. I'm gonna swatch it on my hand here. Actually, that is a pretty nice representation of what that looks like out in natural light and that was another reason I thought it'd be kind of fun to share all my beauty favorites by filming outside because you can see them in natural light. But I love this highlighter it's gorgeous I can tell that this will probably last me for years and years and I'll wear a lot of it when I'm on stage I don't wear it a lot in my everyday life just because I don't put a lot of thick makeup on but it's gorgeous it stays on really well it's really light it doesn't break my skin out I absolutely love it so my next beauty favorite is again something I would normally share these are interesting beauty favorites for me and that they are not the norm for me in terms of products. I picked up some Huda false eyelashes for performing in a musical Camelot. I am not someone who's gonna wear false eyelashes in my everyday. I think it's awesome for people who can. I just normally don't. But I'm always looking for really good false eyelashes for when I'm on stage. And I've usually bought cheap ones, at least while I've been doing productions here in Texas, because when I used to work in New York, um, in the tours that I would do, the makeup artists and the hairstylists would just give them to us. They were kind of 
uh, part of what they would provide for us. And so they always gave me these gorgeous eyelashes from different beauty supply companies. So I was kind of at a loss when I stopped doing that and they didn't give them to me because then I was like, oh, wait a minute, now I gotta figure out what to wear. But again, the makeup artist at Sephora told me about them. They are much more expensive than I normally spend on eyelashes, but they are worth it. They are 20 bucks. And I normally would spend between five and seven dollars buying over the counter ones, but honestly, they didn't always look great on me. And I got maybe two, three uses out of them, and then they would break and fall off. And the guy was like, Oh, you should get these. They're 20 bucks, but you'll be able to use them at least 12 to 15 times. He was right. I used them, I think, at least 12 or 13 times, and I think I can still use them for a good part of the next show I do. I got the Style Scarlet, and they're quite large. <laughs> I'll show you in the box. But I mean, I use those through an entire show run. They're beautiful. I'll put a picture here in the screen so you can see me in my show makeup and see what they looked like on me. I think they would be a little too much in everyday real life, but on stage they were perfect. They were comfortable. They stayed on really well, and I loved them. So they were totally worth the 20 bucks because they really are usable over and over. And then my final beauty favorite is a lip gloss. You know, I love my lipsticks and my liquid lipsticks. This is the Tardis Lip Paint, and it's in TBT, or Throwback Thursday. Sorry about that noise there. That would be a cicada who decided to start talking and wanted to be a part of my video. <laughs> anyway, this is the Tardis Lip Paint color. I'm actually wearing it right now. So I took a trip to Sephora last month and bought some Bite Beauty lipsticks. And as I was going to check out, I saw a tester in the little checkout line, you know how Sephora gets you with this little trial size of this color. So it was a complete impulse buy. I found it at the end of my trip. I thought, well, I'll just try it. Funny thing was the Bite Beauty lipsticks that I went in to buy, I actually ended up taking back because the colors didn't work. And this little impulse buy lipstick, lip paint, lip gloss has been one of my very, very favorite lipsticks all month. And I'm sure it'll be a staple in the fall. It's a really interesting color. And I think I would look at it with Without swatching it and say oh that's too brown for me or too um, rust colored but oh my word guys let me swatch it here on my hands it's awesome look at that color it's kind of a little brown little dusty got a little bit of rose in there um, it's just the perfect shade for fall I love it I love the consistency of it I feel like it stays on like a liquid lipstick but it doesn't dry my lips out it goes great over other colors Ugh, this has just become an absolute favorite lipstick and it was a complete impulse buy uh, I love Tarte and I love this color. If you like 90s throwback browns and mauves, you will love it. So I'll put a link down below for it. Whew. All right, so those were all my favorites for September. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I love sharing my favorites with you guys. And um, uh, let me know in the comments below what were some of your favorites in September. And if you do your own favorites video, put the link to your video in the comments below so I can watch it and cheer you on. So thanks so much for watching, guys. Please take care on the other side of that screen. And I'll be back at you soon with another video. Please like this video if you liked it. And please subscribe if you haven't already subscribed to my channel. Take care, friends. Have a wonderful fall, and we'll see you soon. Bye, guys. It doesn't look like the rain's going to ease up at all, but hopefully we'll arrive to the stadium not completely soaked. <laughs> the adventures of going to a football game on a rainy day.